Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. War 2 is busy hosting a wide array of events coming up. We highlight what's coming up and what you may have missed. Here to discuss everything you need to know is Councilwoman Victoria Seaman. She represents Ward 2. Councilwoman, welcome back to the program. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Six <laughs> weeks goes by very it quickly. It does. We were just talking about that. It seems like it's like every six days we yeah. do this instead of every six yeah. weeks. But it's six weeks later, and we're going to talk about Ward 2 today. So Wonderful. You and I both happen to live in Ward 2. Oh, we know the area pretty well. If you don't know exactly where we're talking about, well, don't worry. We're going to show you right here on the map. <laughs> it's this area, basically west of the Rainbow Curve. If you live in that area, work in that area, of course, you are in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas. And if you're uh, a resident out there, if this is home for you, then you are represented on the city council by Victoria Seaman. You all of a sudden, you're one of the senior members of our council. That's right. Yeah, it's just, that happened quick. It does. It just poof. You know, the time <laughs> flies. So, yeah, you're one of the uh, one of the one of the senior members all of a sudden. Yeah. And um, I remember when you were a newbie, but you know. I, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been very busy. This time of year is especially busy. Yeah. A lot of a lot of events going on, and you have had many, many. So we're going to jump right in here. You posted this on Facebook. You said today at City Council, I was honored to recognize my good friend. Las Vegas Police Protective Association President Steve Grammis, our Citizen of the Month, for all he does to support charitable organizations across the city. Yeah, so not only does he represent the officers, the Metro officers mm -hmm. across our valley, but he also makes sure that they raise money and they give back to the community. And I didn't realize that, Councilwoman, until this ceremonial item that we had this day, and this was back uh, on September 6th, at our council meeting, but I didn't realize all the charities that they're involved with. Yeah, they're very much involved, and they're, they, Steve is the one that puts on Interesting. the fire police football game yeah, that yeah, raises yeah. a lot of money for the charities. <laughs> yeah. And this year, the fire actually beat the police. Yeah, and yeah, this is full yeah. contact, everybody. This is like tackle football, the whole nine yards. They oh, play, they train a yeah, lot. And they yeah, and uh, they play hockey, too, don't they? They have a hockey game. Don't they have a hockey battle as well somewhere in there? Is, you know. I'm not sure, but I... Yeah, I was they play bit... football, too, and it's like it's not flag football. No, it's the deal. no, yeah. and they take out time from, you know, all their hard work, and they have to now train. <laughs> and it's so much fun, and uh, it's just a great, great game. Yeah, so yeah, firefighters won this time around, but yeah. it goes back and forth. It's a, <laughs> it's a tradition every year. So, well, good stuff there. And uh, Councilwoman, you're always involved in education, a lot of the, especially with a lot of the schools, uh, not only within your ward, but across the area. And you had posted this on X, which of course used to be Twitter. It was great to be at Pigott Academy of International Students. It was the kickoff of the 2023-2024 Apple Corps Reading Incentive Program. I see Dr. Tammy Malich from the city there. Uh, what is this program exactly, Councilwoman? So this program is the start of the reading. Ah. Uh, oh, oh they're, they're to, the reading incentive. The reading gotcha. incentive. Gotcha, and gotcha, gotcha. Pigott was actually had the most read minutes than ah, any other school. So good. I'm very proud of that school. I'm very proud of the principal, David Hudzik. Yes, yeah, and he very, was in the green shirt there, yeah. Yes, yeah. he's very much involved with this school, and he just makes it a lot of fun. I've been to a lot of activities at that school, and um, it's just a lot of fun when you have a good principal the kids really seem yeah, to enjoy it going to everything. school. Yeah. It's interesting because a lot of the schools have some kind of reading incentive, but they were the top dogs. They I were guess. the top. Wow, they were wow. in. They, the winners. Got those kids uh, reading a lot of things. So that's, that's awesome because if you're a good reader, then the rest of your studies become a lot easier. A lot that's easier, sure. yeah. No question about it. Well, good stuff there. And since you've been on the program last, we also observed uh, September 11th once again. Uh, you posted on X, I want to express my deepest gratitude to the incredible 1013 Club for their outstanding efforts in keeping the memory of 9-11 alive. It's hard to believe it's been, what, 22 years? 22 um, years. Yeah. A lot of people weren't alive when this happened. The, for those of us who were, we remember exactly oh, yeah. where we were. Quite a day, yeah. And I'm grateful to them. If it wasn't for these New York retired police officers, the 1013 Club, um, we wouldn't have this program every year, and they have done it every year for 22 years. Yeah, 
Uh, a lot of these folks uh, have retired in Las Vegas. Right. Uh, as but were there during 9-11. Oh my gosh, yes, yeah. exactly. And so they not only, um, <laughs> Not only was it their hometown that was being attacked that day, but they were working uh, to try to help those who um, suffered all kinds of tragedy that day. It was terrible. Yes. Yeah, well, always those of us who were around certainly will remember where we were and the memories of that. It's always a that's a tough day to it is as a we tough come day. to every year. So, but a lot of those folks live out here now. We're glad to have them in the community, and now we hope that they're um, getting to heal a little bit on the inside from what they dealt with that day. It's tough. It is. They lost a lot of colleagues. Yes. Uh, fire and they and knew the firemen yeah, that yeah, yeah, lost yeah, their yeah, lives. Absolutely. They and were there, and so it's a memory they will not forget. Yeah. So, and may it never happen again. That's for sure. So, well, Councilwoman, you have been very outspoken helping businesses in Ward Two. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. You've got your Ward Two breakfast buzz uh, coming up later. We'll talk about that. But you do a lot with the business community as well. And uh, you had posted this on X. You said, we had a great turnout today for our Ward 2 Business Roundtable. Now, this is a, a new thing, and it was done at Chinglish, which is a nice restaurant over there on uh, Charleston near, near Rampart, basically. Right, and actually, one of the owners, Ken Heck, mm -hmm. who also is in finance, he actually did a great presentation for the business owners. Oh. We talked about different incentives and programs for small businesses. We listened to the business community. And he gave a great presentation about what's happening right now, affecting businesses. Yeah, he's interest an, rates, everything yeah, else. He's an yeah. economist, yeah. so mm -hmm. um, this was great, and I want to do it again next year Excellent. because uh, I'm sure now that other businesses have heard about it, they'd like to participate. Yeah, it's nice for the the businesses; they can connect. Uh, those mm -hmm. different uh, business owners can connect with one another, but also get some great tips on kind of not only what's going on in the overall economy, but especially right within Ward 2, what, right. what some of the trends that's are. Right. Yeah, exactly. And they can get to know one another. Yeah, for sure. And network. Exactly, so and that's always That was the, the nice yeah. thing. Yeah. And you had um, some city staff there, Leah, uh, Leah Williams from our uh, UD Economic and Urban Development Department. And she there. talked about some of our mm -hmm. new incentive programs left over from ARPA. So yeah. it, was, it was good to have her there. Good resources. Mm -hmm. If you are a small business owner out there and you maybe have some questions, we're going to give you the contact information for Councilwoman before the end of the program. You can reach out to her office. Uh, she and her team will help you uh, maybe find some of those uh, resources that are out there if you're interested. And we also run. still do the Small Business Saturday. Yeah, yeah, those are fun. Um, yeah. And people love that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's become so popular that we now have um, taped up to four months. Wow, wow, wow. Because it's weekly. And Councilman, tell everybody about Small Business Saturday if they've not seen it. I mean, it's an institution, really, been doing it for a while now. But for those who maybe haven't heard about it, tell them what it is. Yeah, so they need to go on our social media. Mm -hmm. And they can, all of it, Facebook, Twitter, Threads, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. uh, Twitter. It's X now. X now, but, you know. <laughs> and we film them, mm -hmm. and we talk about their business for a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. just so people can kind of get to know what they do. And if they service people in Ward 2, or they're in Ward 2. Um, all they have to do is call our office, email us, and we make an appointment, and I go out and I just interview them or have them give yeah, their elevator like business, speech yeah. for two minutes, yeah. and then we post it everywhere. And, uh, and you've got a nice big following on all your social. Huge, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's a nice way to get the word out. I've said this many times, but I've learned a lot myself. Businesses that are kind of in our own backyard didn't know That's they were right. there. Especially some great restaurants. And yes. <laughs> I had a yes. chance to check those out. So yeah. thank you for the information. So, yeah, if you're a small business owner, you happen to be located in Ward 2, or as Councilwoman says, service people who live in Ward 2, then it's fair game for her to talk about That's you right. on her small business Saturday. That's right. A lot of fun. So, and then, Councilwoman, uh, I love this too. Uh, you had posted this on X. You said the opioid uh, abuse epidemic is one of the most significant health crises we face in our country, claiming more than 100,000 lives a year. I had no idea mm -hmm. it was that big. It is. This it's is a, such huge. an important message. Well, what I love about our local DEA and the, the Drug Enforcement Administration is near and dear to my heart. My husband's a retired DEA mm -hmm. right. agent. And so I know a lot of the. Um, you know, the different officers and the office here. And they invited me to come uh, to their um, summit. And what I love about this is they invite the junior high and high school kids mm. and talk to them. 
isn't this amazing? Talk to them about the dangers. And maybe they think they're just going to get high, but it could kill them. The yeah. fentanyl, right. the opioids. And so I think this is such an amazing partnership where you're not just seeing law enforcement arresting, but you're seeing law enforcement reaching out and saying, we want to educate you because yeah. we want to save your life. Exactly. And Councilman, it's so important because so many of the people affected by this crisis are young. They're, it's the, Very young. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all know someone that lost a child or a loved one to the opioid fentanyl crisis. Right. I just heard of one yesterday morning of someone that I knew that lost their daughter at mm. 24. I mean, this is a horrific yeah. um, tragedy in our country. And it's all because these kids, if they knew that they were taking that drug and it was going to immediate ki immediately kill them, I don't think they would take of it. Of course not. Yeah, of course So not. we really need to educate. And that's what I love about the Drug Enforcement Administration now with these yearly summits. Yep. I mean, the whole auditorium was full of junior high that's and great. high school kids. That's great. Yeah. Well, and then also we've got issues with, with methamphetamine where people... Are addicted immediately. It can be after one use, after uh, one use. you can become an, uh, you can become use. addicted. Uh, it can change the chemical makeup of your brain in such a drastic way that you become an addict after one right. usage. And that's where we see the people living in the tunnels and so forth right. because they they're addicted immediately. Mm -hmm. So that's why recovery is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. I mean. I, I really support recovery. You we, have, you have. That's been we, one of we, your standards since you've been elected. We're saving lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're saving lives. So. All right. We'll keep up the the good work on that, and get the, we're going to help get the word out on programs like this. Another thing you've been working on very hard. Um, you've really uh, done a full court press on this as well. Is related to human trafficking. Uh, once again on X, you posted about a town hall meeting on human trafficking. You hosted the event with Henderson City Councilwoman Carrie Cox. And of course, your goal was to educate the community, in particular parents, on the dangers that children face. And this is the second one you've done because the first one was here in the city of Las Vegas. This one was out in Henderson, right? Right. And the reason we're going, uh, you know, out of the city is because it's a southern Nevada yeah, sure, problem. Sure. Sure. And so the goal is really to educate parents everywhere. So the first one was in Summerlin. And we had an amazing turnout, over 200 people. Yeah, I was going to say like 200, 250 people. Yeah, yeah. And, and these are, we, we really teach parents, grandparents, for the signs to look out for of their children yeah, being groomed. That's what you were saying. Because we've had children as young as nine that are being trafficked. And so um, I joined with Councilwoman Carrie Cox, and the Henderson one was an amazing mm -hmm. success as well. And now I'm uh, Councilwoman Bruni and I are arranging to do one in January. Here, another it's one so state. important to go across all of Southern Nevada mm -hmm. and educate um, because it's a big problem. Councilman, we rank toward the top of cities. We're like second. Oh, Some gosh. people say we're number one. And this is not a list that we should be on. No, no. So we need to do everything we can to tackle this. Uh, Councilman, I think one thing that you've educated me on is that a lot of this grooming, this trafficking happens online, right? That's where a lot oh, of yeah. this is taking oh, place. Yeah. Most online. of it, in fact. Most so, of it. Yeah. yeah. You're talking to somebody, some, a young person, they think they're talking to somebody else. They're really talking to someone who has some, some, some bad, bad plans. Yeah, in and mind. parents can monitor. Mm -hmm. They can monitor with certain apps. Um, but if they're not, at least we want them to know the signs. What are some of those, Councilwoman? What are some of the things that people, parents out there, they're watching this, it's like, well, what are, what are some of the red flags I need to be looking for? So I hope that parents will come to the next mm -hmm. meeting because we'll have uh, detectives there that let you know. But some of the signs are the attitude of the child. They're going, they're, they're leaving home at different hours than they normally would, mm -hmm. the way they dress. Um, there's so many signs and what that's why when we do these meetings we have the vice that works with this mm -hmm. talking to the parents and answering questions yep. and they give a PowerPoint but there are those are some of the signs to look for it is a change in attitude yeah. it really is a change in their hours leaving the home and the way that they dress. Good to know. Well, obviously parents yeah, be paying attention and this is something that you had also educated me on this is boys and girls being trafficked. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So, definitely. Not just because uh, you think, well, it's going to be young girls. Oh but no, no, it's both. Wow. 
All right, so another uh, town hall about human trafficking coming up. Uh, January. In January. Right okay. before the Super okay. Bowl. All right, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. We'll be uh, letting everybody know about that. And then uh, a little closer to home, back in Ward 2, uh, you posted on X. You said, uh, hey, you went on a tour of the Meadows School. You applauded the school's motto, In Pursuit of Excellence. You also um, have a picture there with the statue of our mayor, Carolyn Goodman, who was the founder of that school. And I also want to applaud her because um, she founded the school. Yeah, she did. And this is one of the better schools across the country. Yeah. And I always say if CCSD would um, implement some of those programs. I think we we would rank in a different uh, in a different category when it comes to our education. But um, I have to say, um, Mayor Goodman, um, excellent, excellent with founding this school. That is, I think, 100% of the children go on to college. Uh, col well, not just college, great universities, mm -hmm. and this is their headmaster. Jay, Jay Berkeley. Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, we got it. <laughs> well, you he know, is a, he is he is such a great guy. You walk down the halls with him. He knows the names of the students. Yeah, every kid. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Uh, yes. that, that's a talent. It's funny, Councilwoman. I've been here in Las Vegas for a while now. Lived in that area for a while, and I remember back in the day when the school was first being located out there, it was kind of out in the middle of nowhere, all by itself, and now it's- Who would have thought? I know, now it's the middle of summer. When I think you know, about so. that, her vision, uh -huh. she had that, vi it's kind of like, <laughs> I hate to say Bugsy Siegel with Las <laughs> Vegas, right? He had the vision of out in nowhere, and she did too. She did too. And this is an amazing, amazing school. It is, it is, and- uh, And they do do scholarships, by the way. They do, they There's do. a certain percentage. Yes, uh, yes. for those that uh, aren't able to afford to That's go there. Right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, uh, you visited with uh, Jay Berkeley out at the school there. It's right in the center of the ward, and then, uh, Councilwoman, this is a nice tradition. Uh, you're doing it two times a year, but maybe we need to dial it back to one. We're <laughs> gonna dial it back yeah, to one, so we definitely are. You posted quite a few photos from the Art in the Park event. This is at Bruce Trent Park. Uh, these posts were on X. You thanked everyone for coming out, including Positively Arts. You also posted a really fun video of the group. And uh, hey, there were some pets there too, looks like. So. Yes, everybody <laughs> likes to take their animals yeah, exactly. out. You know, this, this is such an amazing thing though, is getting people out and socializing with each other. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. Well, uh, this event really started off fairly modestly, but it's really grown and grown. And, uh, to the point you always make, Councilwoman, is the the level of local talent here uh, that shows up at this. Yeah, these things is is amazing. You know what I no else I noticed, like with this positively arts, there are so many people in this community that really want to give back. Like this positively arts, this nonprofit group that is te you know taking children's talents and and um, having them perform at different yep. places, like. It was amazing this first year we had them, and I will have them back in the uh, spring because just a lot of talent yeah, all yeah. across the board. That's amazing, and uh, you can foster that talent. You never know where it's going to lead. You know, you so those folks might be future graphic artists or who knows what, That's right. you know, or the next Picasso or something. <laughs> so <laughs> very good. And then, uh, Councilwoman, this is something that you had done, uh, much deserved. Uh, in this next post, uh, you thanked some very important people. It's the Breakfast of Heroes. Uh, you thank exceptional people uh, helping those with addiction. Now, this was interesting. Uh, again, this was posted on X, but so many of the folks that we're going to see here, besides uh, you know, the sheriff and the judge that we'll see, uh, are recovering addicts. That's so, right. Yeah, that's amazing. And they're giving back, and that's why they were awarded as heroes. You've got Jeff Iverson that uh, is the founder of Crossroads that's mm -hmm. saving lives and helping people uh, with addiction every day. You have Ryan Hampton and Sean O'Donnell. Uh, Ryan goes across the country, mobilized recovery, has written several books. And then you have Sean O'Donnell with Foundation for Recovery. This, this gentleman, Shine a Light. Mm -hmm. um, they're just doing amazing things and they are recovering addicts. And oh. so we wanted to honor them and there you have uh, Judge Kearns, who yep. has the Yo Court. Yeah, specialty court, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, a youth, that's a youth offender court. Yeah. 
Uh, it's for young people who, uh, through because of drug issues, end up back in the system That's repeatedly. Correct. So the idea is to break that cycle of mm -hmm. recidivism, recurrence, where they're back in trouble and try to get them on a path where they can get their lives back together That's before right. it becomes even worse. So then right. end up, you know, going to prison or something like that. So good turnout. You had hundreds of people at that thing. Yes, like. we yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was here at City Hall. That was right yeah. on the patio. Mm -hmm. The weather was perfect. It, uh, you know, it couldn't have been better. Yeah, yeah, nice event out there. And uh, kudos to those people. Who, uh, it's got to be a tough road. Uh, come back from is so if, if you're battling addiction like that it becomes a lifelong struggle. It does but they are the people that can help people more than anyone. Right, exactly because they've been there. Because <clears throat> they've been there. Mm -hmm. It's it's really easy for us to say I know what you're going mm -hmm. through but un unless you've gone through it um, I think they do a much better job. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. very much very much the case. And Councilwoman, this has been a very unpleasant part of the news lately but you recently attended an event addressing the deadly conflict between Israel and Hamas. Uh, you posted pictures and videos from a rally outside the Venetian in support of Israel. And um, I think the whole world was just shocked when this whole thing erupted. Yeah, um, it was important for me to be there and show my support for Israel, show my support for the Jewish people, and make sure we condemn these acts of terror and violence. And I really add you know, at that rally asked all leaders to step up and show their support. Um, it's been tough. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's scary because these types of conflicts uh, draw the whole world in, including the United States. And so we're all holding our breath that uh, all of this can be resolved without any, any more. Uh, Every any more single Israeli I knew there, personally knew, knew someone or had a relative who had been kidnapped. Oh my God. So, you know, as they say, six degrees from separation, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's just sad. Mm. It's, a, it's a small country and uh, the population is very small and yeah. has a big impact. Well, we will all be hoping that that uh, and comes soon. to an end. Exactly, yes. exactly, Councilwoman. And since you've been on last, we also observed Hispanic Heritage Month. It was uh, just wrapping up. It's uh, middle of September to middle of October. Uh, but we had a lot of events, a lot of observations. You yourself uh, helped market as well. Yes, yes. Uh, being Hispanic and uh, love the, all the celebrations. And I participated in a few. You and, did. Uh, just really enjoyed myself. Um, yeah, I think people probably have watched the show. They know your maiden name was Guerrera. De la Guerra. De la Guerra. Sorry about that. <laughs> and so, okay. yeah. So, you were close. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry, but I, I'll get it right. I'll get it right one of these days. But um, yeah, so this is a, an important time yes. uh, yeah. for the city, but also for you as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Absolutely. And we'll observe it again next year, uh, September <laughs> and October, like we do each year. So, congratulations on that. Councilwoman, before we run out of time, we want to mention you have some upcoming events, some really good ones we want to let everybody know about. We have our October Breakfast Buzz coming up. These are a lot of fun. This is uh, going to be Saturday, October 21st, out at Veterans uh, Memorial Community Center, 9 to 10. Very informal, a lot of fun, free breakfast. Yes. I mean, you get to meet new neighbors, new yeah. people in the community that you didn't know. Yeah, talk to the councilwoman, talk to the police that patrol your area, our That's marshals, right. the patrol your parks. Ask them questions, yeah. yeah. Just please do this, folks. If you plan to attend, just let us know so that we can have enough food there. That's correct. Yeah, just RSVP real quick to Councilwoman's uh, go to the website or call her office. So, And then last but not least, same day, movie in the park? October, oh, da 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 <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about, folks? You know, Adam's family, exactly, coming up on October. Same night. Exactly. Same night. So bring your blankets, bring your snacks. We will have maybe popcorn, I think, yeah, there and water. Yeah, we usually do in water, But yeah. bring your snacks, bring your dinner. Yeah, come on bring out. Bring blankets. It might be cold. And did we mention Councilman, it's free. So yes, it's just free. just come on out. <laughs> this is at Bruce Trent Park. That's right at the corner of Vegas Drive and Rampart. And so we'd love to have you come out. We'll have a big screen there. and. Usually in October, the weather's gorgeous, so you come on and really enjoy But bring a blanket anyway. Yeah, because you know what? You get a little breezy maybe, yeah. and sometimes happens. Yeah. So you'll, you'll be all good to go then. 
Well, Councilwoman, the time always flies uh, when we're together, I but uh, we want to tell everybody out there, we always want to hear from you. So if there's something you'd like to share with Councilwoman Victoria Seaman, you can find her on Facebook, X, and LinkedIn. You can also contact her by picking up the phone, 702-229-2420, or send her an email. Her address is ward2 at lasvegasnevada.gov. And she or one of her great staff will get right back to you and help you out. A lot of times we get questions that really don't have to do with the city at all, but you got them okay, in the right. We can you, help yeah, about. We'll, we'll send you in the right direction yeah, and we'll point definitely. you to where you need to get the answers. So, well, Councilwoman, great work. We'll uh, see you back here in another six weeks. It'll go by fast. It, it will go does. by really fast. We're going to be right into the holidays <laughs> by the next time you're here. You yeah. know, so this year will be pretty much over by yeah. then. So. Anyway, unbelievable. I know time flies when you're having fun so <laughs> we'll see you then and folks we want to tell you out there please don't miss our next show beginning on October 26th with Ward 5 City Councilman Cedric Creer. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku and Amazon Fire. Also watch for our QR code during the closing credits of this show to subscribe and download to our newsletter and don't forget you can watch us live on the internet at KCLV.TV. Thanks for joining us everyone. We'll see you next time around.